The latest neuroscience research on ch young children's brains may have major consequences for our education system. 80% of brain development occurs from the time a baby's in the womb to the age of three. This means children living in vulnerable situations in dysfunctional families need educational interventions at three, not five, when most primary schools start. Leading medical experts say it's wrong to expect the system to fix the problems later in high school. The research is fueling calls for governments, state and federal, to ensure preschool is taken as seriously as primary and high school education. In a moment, we'll be joined by the Education Minister, Peter Garrett, but first, this special report by Late Line's Suzanne Smith, looking at two early childhood projects, one in Alice Springs and one in Brisbane. <laughs> They say laughter is the best medicine. <laughs> and Play-Doh is really funny. Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! These three and four year olds come from Alice Springs suburbs and town camps. They spend three hours a day having intensive fun reading, playing and eating good food. They are part of the Congress Medical Services Preschool Readiness Program funded out of the Northern Territory Intervention and Stronger Futures Policy. More than 300 kids of this age group live in Alice Springs and Congress aims to get every one into the preschool program for three hours a day. We see that from when they start. I suppose that's, that's the most amazing thing for us as a team to see these kids come in as timid, shy little children and they, as they come and they know that it's safe and it's, it's lots of fun and, and we're here to look after them, they actually start blossoming and smiling and talking to us and, you know, we get lots of, lots of hugs and, 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 yeah, as you say, a lot of them are coming from homes where there's a lot of unpredictability and they, don't, and they may not feel safe. New neuroscience research on the brains of children in the womb and in the first five years of life is causing a major rethink of preschool education. Neuroscience is telling us now that by age three, 80% of brain development has occurred. By age four, 92% of brain development has occurred. Quack, quack. Quack, quack, quack. We've got to work with children and families well before preschool. From pregnancy through to two, through to three, they are the critical years and that's well before preschool. If a child lives in a vulnerable environment, the effect on their brain can be devastating. If you're struggling against the odds, if you're growing up with violence, if you're growing up in a family where your needs are not being properly met, perhaps where you've sat in front of the television too much, where you don't hear a lot of conversational language in the house, where you haven't got an effective routine, these sorts of things have a huge impact on your development and they overwhelm your genetic potential. Genes are not expressed in an adverse early social environment. This graph shows how many connections there are in the human brain at different ages. This indicates the very rapid rate at which connections between neurons are being made in early childhood from one to three years of age. And then those connections drop off dramatically. The child's environment affects how many connections remain stable, influencing their ability to control emotions, language and many other critical areas and babies in the womb can be severely affected by stress. If mothers in utero are living in fear or in violent relationships um, are stressed, then the baby will, if you like, develop in a way where it's expecting from birth onwards to be in an environment of stress. That turns on the neurobiological pathways that are activated when we're stressed. For, for most people, those pathways only get activated at times with acute stress. But for babies in utero who experience stress, that neurobiological pathway is turned on the whole time. That has huge implications for their lifelong health and well-being. Neuroscience research is also backing claims that leaving intervention until high school makes it much harder to achieve long-lasting behavioural change. Hey, look, come, we'll see how you want. With this neuroscience in mind, every pregnant Indigenous woman in Alice Springs, under 28 weeks, gets their own nurse until the child is five years old. Good girl. 
Here a nurse from Congress is visiting sole parent Natasha Hampton yeah. and her 16-month-old yeah. twins, Acklin and Grace. Will they put um, two, a two-word sentence together? <laughs> Tifty, mum. <laughs> yes, Mommy, yeah. Tifty. Yep. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. go car or, you know. So Natasha she... says the nurse has become a close contact and a confidant. The nurse is really good. Like, if I've got, they've got certain um, things that we need to need to check the progress as in like developmental six months, 12 months and so forth. But every now and then, for example, breastfeeding, I would say, oh, I need need information on weaning breastfeeding and they'll they'll provide that for me or um, one time I was looking for external services to help me with cleaning so um, it wasn't just about child development it was helping me to be a better mother for my children. Stand up until the numbers stop. The integration of health and education services is a big factor in this program's success. Problems like hearing impairment are picked up straight away. Uh, try again. Okay. Oh, you want to show me the other one? Okay. Yeah. I'm done here with Gail. You ready? You are ready? One, Four. two, three, go! Three-year-old Callum has been in the program for over a year. When he first came, he couldn't speak. We'll see you next time, okay? Before he went to this program, he was very rowdy, um, run the merry muck on me, um, never spoke. Um, since he's been going to the program, he's starting to com um, speak to me more than what he used to. Um, he's saying extra words, um, doing things he never used to do. You show me. Oh! <laughs> Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. It is early in the morning in the outer suburbs of Brisbane and eight children aged between 8 and 11 are doing their breathing exercises with Cheryl Batchelor. OK, all right, hands on your knees. OK, sing up nice and straight. Cheryl Batchelor is the manager of this special cognitive program known as Shaping Brains. It is run by the Benevolent Society and devised by some of America's best neuroscientists. A former Indigenous high school teacher, Cheryl Batchelor says this breathing exercise helps to calm the brain. The children here have been referred from local schools or through the centre's health programs. Nine-year-old Caitlin Four, Dixon has been coming to this three, special early year centre two, for over a year now. One. OK, stop. One more time. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. When Caitlin first arrived at the age of eight, she couldn't read and had severe behavioural problems. She didn't get the help she needed at a younger age. She kept touching other children and taking their things and it was like her brain was telling her to go from one thing to another and she couldn't concentrate on anything that she was doing. To improve Caitlin's ability to control her emotions and improve her memory and be mindful of her behaviour, Cheryl introduced her to CogMed, a special computer program. What is the science behind this computer program? The science behind it is that it's helping children increase the capacity of their working memory. Because we're finding when children come to school, they're having a lot of trouble concentrating and they're not hearing what's going on in the classroom because they're diverted by other types of sounds. So this program helps kids really, really concentrate and really focus their attention on listening and using their eyes to see what's on the screen and therefore increasing their capacity to learn. Caitlin is now reading and her behaviour is calmer and more rational. By the end of the first week I could see improvement in her ability to calm herself when things weren't, like when she wasn't winning the game or whatever. Um, so it was a noticeable improvement straight away. When you feel frustrated now, what do you think in your head you've got to do? What... I, do get, I do get a bit frustrated still sometimes and kind of not work it out. But in the end, I always do what mum and dad tell me to. But I may not do it instantly, but I may do it sometime. <laughs> Cheryl Batchelor says this project shows 15 hours a week of preschool education from the age of three should be free and universal and include first-class neuroscience-based programs. 
I, I left teaching because I felt really helpless. I felt like I was hitting a brick wall every day I turn up to school and I really felt that the system was letting a lot of these children down. One longitudinal study in the United States found that children who had good early childhood educational experiences were more likely to graduate from high school, have a job, have higher average earnings and lower levels of crime. It is all about long-term happiness after all. <laughs> Suzanne Smith, Late Line.